And here we go to the next match for World Championship Wrestling International Match at 16 Stone 4 from San Francisco, California, Mr. Excitement, Pat Patterson. And his opponent weighing 17 Stone 2 from Italy, Antonio Pugliese. There you have it, and now Michael Hunt is giving the instructions to Pat Patterson and Antonio Pugliese. Now this is a 15 minute time limit match, a great international match, two of the greatest wrestlers in the world. From Italy, Antonio Pugliese at 17-2. Pat Patterson, 16 stone three. There he goes bouncing off the ropes and I'm checking the time as I turn the microphone over to Paul. Back in Australia again. His uh, third visit to Australia. And uh, Patterson hasn't changed much. He has uh, lost a little weight, but uh, he's outside those ropes. And uh, Pugliese is waiting for him, this very determined Italian wrestler who possesses tremendous speed and tremendous agility. I've always termed him the surprise wrestler because you never know what he's going to come up with next. And uh, they move in to grips. It's a headlock applied by Patterson, but uh, bridging there by Pugliese, endeavoring to get a breakthrough here. Increasing the pressure is Pat Patterson, and a handful of hair into the bargain. Strong uh, headlock by uh, Patterson with a bridging at the feet. Pat Patterson, the blonde bombshell, as he is sometimes known. Handful of hair by uh, Pugliese. And that headlock is still well applied. And a blow by Patterson. Michael Hunt, the third man in the ring. Patterson uh, steps outside the ring. Michael Hunt counting very fast because uh, Patterson uh, has a habit of going out there to get a breather and uh, you can't blame referee Michael Hunt for doing this because he's wasting time. Oh, Pugliese being urged on by the audience. Patterson steps outside the ruts again and Michael Hunt is on the fast can again. Fair enough. Get back inside or you'll be counted out, Patterson. He climbs up the steps. That counts a fast one. He's back in on 15 in on his opponent on the mat and full of hair and a blow to the head oh a turn blow to the midsection Pugliese has got the uh, pressure there on that uh, headlock broken out of though it's a shoulder back by Pugliese he comes up the rest again jumps over his opponent Patterson goes down oh Boy, this is some match. Headlock by Pugliese. You think one man is going to get the advantage and then the tables turn. This Very is easy. a great example of two uh, tremendously powerful wrestlers. Even though Patterson is giving away nearly a stone in weight, it makes up for it by his speed and agility. He's one of the most spectacular wrestlers in the game. Tony Pugliese, for a man coming into the ring at 17 stone, too, moves very fast as well. And both of them are high on the rating list on the International Wrestling Alliance latest ratings for the month of March. And believe me, these boys, it's a battle of leverage, pressure against these boys. And they're giving the fans the kind of a mess they want to watch. As Paul said, it's first one man on top and then the other. You can see a picture's worth a thousand words. Pugliese with that chin lock right under the chin of Patterson. It's not a strangle and Michael Hunt doesn't even need to go in close. He tells Patterson to break the pull on the hair. He smacks him on the bandage where he had his head cut open at Festival Hall last Saturday night. 
and that provided the breakaway. Now over the ropes, it's a breakaway, but Patterson comes in, and the blow to the mid-session comes up again. And Broken out as though on the ropes. And the shoulder bump. Pugliese uh, wins that one. He comes again. Patterson ducks down. He comes up. Oh! Surprising wrestlers I've ever seen because uh, he completely surprises his opponent. You saw there Patterson uh, waiting, looked like he was going to uh, meet him and uh, take the advantage, but then all of a sudden he went through his legs. Bigger forearm lock now by Pugliese. He has the advantage. There's the shot on your screen. And Pugliese uh, is uh, 17 stone 2. He weighs uh, 12 pounds more than Pat Patterson, but uh, Really, uh, to look at them, there's not much between them. They're very evenly matched. Patterson is a spectacle, and uh, he can really fly around the ring. Bigger forearm lock was ever broken out of. Patterson only got through there. But, uh, returning to that mob again, the bigger forearm lock was uh, Antonio Pugliese. him down again and that's good work by Pugliese. Uh, currently uh, quite legal. No doubt about it this audience is 30 or 9 predominantly in favor of Pugliese cheering him on when he's on top of Patterson now. Patterson bridging up to his knees and the figure four lock still being applied at the shoulder. The arm bar at the elbow figure four lock at the shoulder. Patterson trying to get into the position, and that time Pugliese used a handful of hair to toss him to the canvas, and that's one that we saw. But obviously the referee didn't. And now Patterson tossing him in the ropes. Down he goes for the shoulder butt by Pugliese. Oh. This time Patterson's waiting for him. Oh. A take me down, a drop kick by Pugliese. A beautiful rolling deal by Pugliese. Oh. A rolling deal by Pugliese. And Patterson on the canvas. And a tremendous hand from the audience in the studio. One of the best passages in, that, uh, in this match. Uh, we saw there, and uh, it was one and then the other. They're very evenly matched, but on this occasion, the advantage has been taken by uh, Pugliese with his figure four arm lock, which he has uh, applied on a number of occasions uh, during the course of this match, and with success, I might add, too, because you notice there that Patterson is, is locked up there, and it is a difficult hole to get out of. Patterson says, uh, watch my arm, watch my arm, and uh, Michael Hunt says, I'm watching it. Michael Hunt doesn't miss much. He's right up with the action. Bigger forearm lock is still well secured there by Antonio Pugliese, this fast-moving Italian wrestler who certainly has won the hearts of many wrestling fans in Australia and, and is really a pleasure to watch. Bigger forearm lock. Patterson up on his feet. What will he do this time? It'll be very interesting. He trips his opponent up. Kicking breakaway by Pugliese. Oh, he's dropped over by Pugliese again. And a return kick there by uh, uh, Patterson. And he comes back. Pugliese comes back. Arm drag by uh, Pugliese. Boy, this is wow. tremendous. And rightly so, the audience here showing their appreciation. Uh, these wrestlers in the ring uh, we're seeing a great match indeed there's action all the way fast moving holes and counter holes well Yezi increasing the pressure which uh, caused Patterson to say no 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 because it he was making it feeling very painful bigger forearm lock is still there by Antonio Pugliese. <laughs> Turning around now, chance perhaps here for Patterson. Getting on his knees. 
But Pugliese has a very strong grip here. He increases the pressure. And once again, Patterson's in trouble. Patterson has this free right hand. Tried to the trunks, but Michael Hunter's right there. Broken out of though. Pugliese comes up. He executes a perfect shoulder butt. Comes up the ropes again. Patterson ducks down. Oh! Oh, they both Whoa. combine in mid-center. Oh! None of them got the advantage there. Less than five minutes to go in the match, Paul, and what an exciting match it is. And the fans are eating it up. They certainly are, Jack, and uh, Michael Hunt double counting here. Uh, they came in hard. They're like two trucks colliding, and uh, they went down like uh, bags of potatoes. But Patterson's the first one to go. Tries for a dive. Pugliese at the last second. Moved out of the way. Tries for the elbow hammer blow, and Patterson gets out of the way. Two close shaves within uh, 30 seconds there. Uh, the dive by Patterson and then the elbow hammer blow by uh, Antonio Pugliese. I'll take the microphone, Jack. Yes, I'll take the microphone and get over to the other microphone position. Whenever they come out near our broadcasting point, we uh, get out of the way for safety's sake and also to uh, be sure our equipment isn't... Uh, broken up and sometimes we've lost a microphone or two in world championship wrestling and definitely our announcer stand's been broken up a few times but patterson stays in the ring he's a defensive wrestler of the rough and ready school there's no doubt about it but uh, he's a man who saves most of his roughhouse tactics for inside the ring and uh, He's a tremendous defensive wrestler. Of course, Pugliese is of the offensive school, and he's always on attack. Well, the defensive wrestler is much like the counterpuncher in boxing. They're waiting for uh, an opening, and then they use it to their best advantage, but the only difference is that the defensive wrestler uses every, every possible way to bend the rules to his own advantage. And now we take a look at our watch, and there is three minutes to go. Three minutes to go. Three minutes. And uh, the action continues in this match. Uh, things are back in order. Both wrestlers back in the ring. Oh, a solid blow there to the chest by Pugliese. It met solidly all right. But Patterson comes back. He has uh, great recuperative powers, uh, Pat Patterson. He grabs the head of Pugliese. Butts it into the uh, cross buckle, but apparently had hold of the hair too, and Michael Hunt had to speak to him. Off the hair, says Michael Hunt. Patterson uh, pouring it on at the moment as he moves in with another kick there. Back off, says Michael Hunt. Grabs hold of uh, Pugliese again. Uh, not much time remaining in the match as uh, Patterson comes in. He's got him in a tight spot here in that corner. Not giving Pugliese much room to uh, get around and get out, perhaps. Ooh, count of four. If he had gone to five, he would have been disqualified. Count. Pass the count. It's a blow to the face. Two minutes to go. There it is. Two minutes to go in this match. This international match between Pugliese and Carson. And uh, both of them are working hard to get the, a fall here. It's a blow to the face. Oh, Pugliese was, uh, lost a bit of steam there, but he is coming back. He's got a second win. As he says, get up, Patterson, get up. Patterson on the ropes. It's a blow. Oh. And once again, I retrieve the microphone, Jack, over to you. Yes, and we come over here with a minute and a half to go in the match. And Pugliese is pouring it on. And he's getting some of his own back, having been roughed up by Patterson. Patterson is thrown on the cement floor. And uh, time is running out in this match. There's only one minute to go in the match. One minute to go. And Pugliese should give him a chance. The seconds are ticking away. There's only a half a minute to go in the match. Patterson climbing back into the ring now. And uh, singing out. And he might have
might have picked up something when he was underneath the ring. And comes in with a knee drop to the back, with a small of the back. The seconds are taking on. Patterson now getting up to his feet. Only seconds remaining in the match as he comes over. Patterson comes over, roughs him up around the eyes, and then goes over to a neutral corner. Pugese, having him roughed up the eyes, comes over. And now Patterson coming up, goes over. He's still working on Antonio Pugese as the bell rings to end the match. And it must go down in the record books as a draw. And Patterson getting out of the way. The time is spread out. And it has to go down into the record books as a draw between Pat Patterson and Antonio Pugliese. Well, they're in the ring, and first of all, from Greece, the Golden Greek weighing an 18 stone is Spiros Arion. His opponent from Germany weighing in also an 18 stone is Hans Schroeder. Referee, Bob Reagan. Well, Bob Reagan, well, it'll be Bob taking a terrible slam there in that previous match from Big Bad John and unable to continue. A very grueling match indeed. Now it's Spiros Arion, the Austro-Asian champion, in against the man from Germany in Hans Schroeder. I want to tell you what, there's a hush come over the audience here in the studios of Channel 9 after that very, well, match in which we just saw hatred, vengeance, sadism exploding in the ring. Standing wrist lock from Spiros Arion, Hans Schroeder on the receiving end. Short arm bar, Spiros Arion going for hammerlock, getting it right up the middle of the back of uh, Hans Schroeder. Schroeder walking to the outside of the ropes and uh, necessitating a break from Spiros Arion. Spiros a very true sportsman indeed, a man of very high calibre. Japanese wrist lock from Hans Schroeder. Nicely taken down by Spiros Arion. Spiros Arion taking advantage of the situation over the top on Schroeder. Now again, Schroeder outside the ropes. Standing yeah, wrist lock again from Schroeder. Bobby Reagan, the referee. Standing wrist lock again, turned by Hans Schroeder. Oh, taken down. Wallaby Bob McMasters, as I mentioned to you, injured. Wallaby Bob, who has the Matry Bar Hotel, just outside the Broad Beach International Hotel on the Gold Coast. And I bet she wishes she was there today after the terrible beating that he's taken. Outside the ropes again, Hans Schroeder. The referees hold Spiros Arion trying to pull away, but it's a Schroeder ripping of the eyes of Spiros Arion. Want well, to be Bob putting a caution on hands too, but the caution doesn't rub out what's already been done. Head of uh, Spiros rammed into that turnbuckle. Oh, forearm jolt from Schroeder. Spiros coming off the ropes right into another one from Hans Schroeder. As he rips into the chest, but Spiros springing for the ropes, comes back with lefts and rights. Straight into the chest, into the side of the head of Hans Schroeder. Then kicks into midsection, takes him up and brings that big shoulder, that strong shoulder, the shoulder that has cracked the ribs of many opponents. Spiros getting great momentum. Coordination beautifully done as he brought that shoulder deep into the chest of Hans Schroeder. From a side headlock, takes down and over the top, he comes with a side headlock again on Hans Schroeder. Figure four head scissors from Schroeder, flipped out by Spiros Arion. Again, they walked around watching each other closely, ready for the referee's hold. Spiros pulls him into a side headlock and then goes behind nicely into a hammerlock. Over to the ropes, but it's uh, the ropes that are saving hands, Schroeder. Schroeder. 
Oh, nicely out of it. Nice maneuver, Spiros Arion. Comes in for a big... Oh, the bear hug. Bear hug, but again, Schroeder going to the protection of the ropes. Whoa, from a side headlock right on the chin of uh, Spiros Arion. Oh, ripped again into Spiros Arion. Spiros Arion coming back again, this true champion, the Golden Greek. Spiros into midsection. Kicking into Hans Schroeder. An Irish whip from Spiros. Off the ropes comes Schroeder. Spiros flying. Back slam. Then comes the big knee drop from Spiros Arion. Over the top. Oh, pushed away by Schroeder. Oh, underneath he comes Spiros. That shoulder again. Digging into Schroeder. Sending flying into the corner. Working on the midsection. Schroeder back. Ripping at the eyes of Spiros Arion. Over there, oh, it's Hans Schroeder, this time on the throat of the Golden Greek. Hands working on that uh, Schroeder, Spiros, now a forearm job, and off comes the road, Spiros, Arion. Coming off like an arrow from the bow, and now ripping into the section, slamming into the side of the head. The Schroeder picks up the atomic drop, and beautifully comes down, and over the top comes Spiros. Three, and it's a three count by the Golden Greek. And there's his the victory hand is raised by referee Bob Reagan, and we're going to come back with a great Tojo against Johnny Gray after this message. Certainly, it's a big welcome back to the world of championship wrestling. And, uh, gee, Mike, it looks to be a very interesting show we've got today and some great wrestling we're going to see. Yes, they've packaged a lot into this. And you're going to see some films from all over the world. And this is why we're calling it the world of championship wrestling because it's going to be all over the world for you with action. And uh, we've got some exciting action. Well, I do believe our first film clip we have there is of a great match from overseas. What about introducing it? Yes, well, we'll have before. I think we'll go to action in centre ring before we go to the film because we want to see something live for you. And uh, you have over there one of your favourites, of course, Larry O'Day in there, and he's against Jack Clay. Claiborne, there it is, there's Jack Claiborne for you. Big fella too, and of course, Larry O'Day. Well, yes, Larry O'Day, of course, from Sydney, uh, New South Wales, and Jack Claiborne is from uh, America. He was born in France, really, but a very experienced uh, here as a, uh, on a world tour. And uh, Larry O'Day is centre ring with Claiborne now. They take the referee's hold of centre ring, and... Claiborne has taken right over there and put down the headlock there by Larry O'Day, and he certainly is a well-built fellow, this Jack Claiborne. Though. Yes, he's got a lot of experience, too. I haven't got a lot of background on him. I don't know if you have, Ted, but uh, you can see by his figure that he's fairly fit, and uh, Larry O'Day's wasting no time. I haven't seen Larry come into a match as quickly as that. I think Larry must himself respect the ability of this fella. Well, he, uh, he certainly likes to get into action straight away, Larry O'Day, and uh, Jack Claiborne, of course, as I said, born in France. Uh, he t turned a pro in 1964 from amateur wrestling in the, in the gymnast at school when he was a young lad, but he's, uh, his body certainly tells me that he has worked very, very hard uh, in the professional wrestling, and by gee, it certainly has shown in uh, his efforts already so far at centre ring. Larry O'Day, there with a leg lock on to Jack Claiborne. And of course, everybody knows the, um, the background of Larry O'Day. He certainly uh, has wrestled against the best in the world for a number of years now. He turned pro in 1964 also. He started as an amateur in 1960. He lives in Sydney, New South Wales. The statistics of Larry O'Day, 28 years of age, 6 foot 3, weighs 16 and a half stone, and by gee, he certainly is a big fellow. He's got a big body, hasn't he, Larry? Yes, well, he keeps himself fit, and I noticed uh, Jack Claiborne, uh, born in France, but spent a lot of time in America, and uh, he's coming over the top there, trying to pull that chin back of Larry O'Day, as Larry has the toe hole still applied. Claiborne coming over the top there, and the referee, Tony Marino from Melbourne, and toe all over the top comes... Uh, Claiborne, and look at the chin lock now we've applied on uh, Larry O'Day. Five years in amateur, Tony Marino, uh, as amateur wrestler. Not a big fellow, but, you know, very well built also. He's now living in Melbourne. 
And he's been refereeing for the past seven years. Rated number one in Australia as far as referees are concerned. And he certainly does a lot of work in the ring, Tony Marino. I've watched him over the years and uh, he goes over the top of a pack of people there in that ring and uh, he gets in there where the tough, where the going is really tough and you can see him moving underneath those big wrestlers and by gee, when you get fellas like the Giant and, and Haystack Calhoun over the years and all these guys that have come from overseas, he's not a very big man, Tony Marino, but action is a plenty here now. It's a full Nelson's applied here. Oh, look at that reverse, the drop kick by Jack Claiborne. Very versatile, uh, a great athletic body on Claiborne from America. And the referee puts the count of three on to Larry O'Day. He bounces back at centre ring with Claiborne now. A test of strength here by both wrestlers. Claiborne beautifully built around the diaphragm. He bridges now. And O'Day will uh, possibly try and show his strength. Oh, he comes right down on top of uh, Jack Claiborne here. And the amazed look on Larry O'Day's face gives you some idea of the strength that uh, Claiborne has. And there's a beautiful manoeuvre by Claiborne. Look at that for wrestling, will you? On the world of championship wrestling, a beautiful quote from Mike Cleary at the opening when he said, because the new name of this uh, show is uh, the world of championship wrestling because you'll be seeing wrestlers from all around the world, including film clips week after week. Well, that's right. And one thing I want you uh, to watch is this one we have 20 years ago was taken. And that'll show you the difference not only in wrestling, but also in the television, the way it's produced and directed. And as you see, the arm lock there, wrist lock uh, by Claiborne on Larry O'Day. And back to that manoeuvre too. Uh, I don't think we'll go back there. We've got some other action for you as far as replay is concerned, but we've, we've gone on a little bit further. We'll wait for something else for you and then we'll shoot back to it. But here's Claiborne still with a standing uh, wrist lock applied on Larry O'Day. Marino, as I mentioned, and we've given him a few mentions, but uh, he's wearing also on the breast of his jacket the National Wrestling Alliance Accreditation Referees Badge, which uh, regards him as rated by the World of Wrestling and the National Wrestling Alliance, the controlling body. You'll see it later on as he moves around. Larry O'Day's still in trouble here, and this Claiborne really is action-packed. Great man manoeuvres and also a variation of holes. Where's he going under now? Under, right up there, lifting the arm, and then brings Larry O'Day heavily over. Comes down across the arm and the arm bar, a two count. O'Day just quickly got those shoulders off. Again, Marino on his feet, but Larry O'Day turns around and in comes Claiborne again with the wrist locked and gets the chin down. Oh, and you'll see the referee just checking to make sure because under the rules of wrestling, the uh, throat or the windpipe cannot be blocked there by any means at all. And Claiborne just on the side of the head there, working in. Have a look at the biceps. Have a look at the chest as he digs in there on Larry O'Day. Larry O'Day just trying to get to his feet, best to go with it rather than against it. But again, he turns it over and gets that wrist lock. Going in shorter then, then standing wrist lock again. Going from behind, but O'Day outside the ropes, and that's why the referee's called for a break. And a clean break by Claiborne. Yes, he breaks very clean, Jack Claiborne, Mike. And Larry O'Day, of course, uh, much bigger, moves in now and forced back on the ropes is Claiborne uh, Day by Claiborne. Oh, beautiful forearm by Larry O'Day. And there's a lot of power. And Claiborne's taken the three of those, four, and still standing. Although he goes down now to the bottom rope as referee Marino moves in, puts a word to uh, Claiborne as O'Day continues on with his barrage and a flying man there by Larry O'Day followed up by a chin lock at centre ring. There was action for you on the world of championship wrestling. Marino, the referee, moves around, checking that chin lock. As you heard Mike Cleary discussing with you a moment ago, trying to explain why the referee makes sure that that is a legal hole. If that windpipe is blocked off, it makes it very, very difficult indeed for that uh, wrestler on the other end to, to breathe at all. You can see those powerful biceps on the uh, on Larry O'Day there. Five minutes we've been going in this match. Looking for a fall to find the winner as O'Day takes Claiborne down now. But Claiborne bridges again in the centre of the ring. The referee watching closely to make sure those both shoulders are pinned before he applies the count. And there's that bridge again by Claiborne. Look at that strength from the man, will you, as he takes Larry O'Day right back to his feet now. And uh, Claiborne certainly a most experienced wrestler. You heard his background before. Referee now comes in, asks for the break, a high knee lift by O'Day, and Claiborne doubles up. There goes that forearm again, and this time Claiborne down, bounces back to his feet, and Larry O'Day continues to come with that head scissors onto Claiborne. Yes, and Claiborne's in trouble from the flying mare down to the head scissors from Larry O'Day. He also has the wrist lock applied. Larry O'Day uh, didn't break too cleanly from the ropes then, but I suppose he was clean enough to get away with it. The referee now, what's he looking at? He says that little thigh was a across the windpipe and uh, asked to release, but he released it quick enough to stop the count, but came back and hold it. Look at him trying to whip himself out, Claiborne. Coming over there, and trying to try and work forward, I'd say, here, to see if he can get those legs of Larry O'Day's just a little bit spread so he can get that chin out. Look at it. He's coming up now. See him pushing those knees right up, spreading the legs, but O'Day's hanging on. Look at him. They're coming on, but Claiborne's got the head out. He's got the head out now. Now, what's he trying to do to get over the top? He's Ryan pushed away by Larry O'Day. Off the ropes. Oh, a beautiful handstand there. 
Replay of the thing being thrown. Eh? We'll have a look at the replay of Larry O'Day being thrown there. When they're ready, we'll go back and give you a look at it. Crowd calling here. Here he is, action replay. Look at them. Finger underneath. Rice bridge as he goes. Look at the bridge. Here he comes down over the top as Larry O'Day hanging on there. Comes down, he goes, but look, he's going to be lifted up here. This is the replay we're showing you now. Dropped him down. Can he throw him up? It's in slow motion. O'Day hanging on there. Again, he goes up. Tucked away there by Claiborne. Pushed up. Claiborne comes up. Over goes Larry O'Day. And he's slammed down to canvas. Beautiful this, action. Wasn't it beautiful? We're back to centre ring now with live action for you. And they're all tucked away there in a real tight package. I was watching the action replay there. I don't know who was on top here. Who has the, uh, the commanding hold? It looks like O'Day has it at the moment. A kick away there by Claiborne. But O'Day's got the toe hold. Claiborne coming over the top. Trying to get that here. But the referee right on the spot. Again O'Day. Look at him going in there. Grabbing onto that toe hold. Referee Tony Marino on his knees there, watching to see if those shoulders are down. This is a pretty uh, even match at this Very stage, Mike, and the referee is moving now to have a good look around as uh, O'Day working on that left leg of uh, Larry O'Day's, and uh, Claiborne is in a lot of pain there. Referee indicating that that elbow has been used, a forearm and not the uh, clenched fist, and uh, the... The hole is broken as they both bounce back. O'Day comes in, slams one low to the stomach. Another forearm by O'Day. And this crowd here, watching the world of championship wrestling, uh, screaming for more action as O'Day comes in with a flying knee drop right to the hamstring area of Jack Claiborne, who now is... Uh, is really grimacing on that face of his. He tries now to twist that mouth and neck of O'Day's around, but O'Day has the power and the strength in those arms. And also with that leg lock he has on uh, Claiborne is making it very, very difficult there indeed for O'Day to do much else about it apart for weight on a submission from Claiborne. I doubt very much that that will come, but they certainly are evenly matched in this contest. If you've just tuned in to the world of championship wrestling, Jack Claiborne was born in France turned pro in 1964 as an amateur wrestling. Here's the action back at centre ring once more. Claiborne chopped away at Larry O'Day and all this capacity crowd here at the studios of Channel 9 in Brisbane. I'd say there was over 400 people here standing room only as they see Larry O'Day coming down with a big drop on Jack Claiborne. There's Claiborne for you. Close up shot in the background. Tony Marino. Referee is the referee and Larry O'Day there pulling at the toes. The shoulders down trying to pin those shoulders. Claiborne coming around over the top again and there's 10 minutes of the match gone now. 10 minutes. O'Day's still over the top. Claiborne is right near the ropes, but just can't get those shoulders to the bottom rope there to call on the referee to get O'Day to break. O'Day hanging on there with that toe. He's worked heavily on those side ligaments in the ankle there of Jack Claiborne. Over the top, it's a one count from the referee, but that left-hand shoulder of uh, Larry O'Day's not on the... There it is there, it's up again. Claiborne pushing. Look at him trying to push it ahead of down. He's got his leg over the top holding the right one, and he's trying to get over with his chest to hold the left one. Again, it's a one count. Oops, referee pulled the hand back that time. That comes Claiborne. Over the top, they're locked in there with Lux. Again, Claiborne at O'Day. Whoa, he's got it up. He's got it up. And now oh, he stops on it and says, well, here, we'll hammer it down. That comes Claiborne. First to his feet, Larry O'Day comes in, but Claiborne slaps one right in underneath. Again, Claiborne comes in. Jack Kimmy, the heavy four-round jolt. In for a headbutt. O'Day on the ropes. O'Day back to the corner. He's backed over there into the neutral corner as Jack Claiborne egged on here by the crowd. It's been a very even match. I don't know how the crowd has split, but it's a nice feel. And look at him. He sends only 16 or 17 stone of O'Day. Over the top he comes. Two. Oh, a kick away from Larry O'Day as the hand of the referee was coming down for the third count. Claiborne coming off the rope. Oh, right under the knee. In the midsection, Jack Claiborne came down on the legs of Larry O'Day. Oh, and Claiborne's doubled up. The referee's counting here. He's easy counting out. Who's up first? It's Larry O'Day, and he comes in underneath. Oh, and up he comes to the four-round job. Digs it in underneath again. And the flying mare again as O'Day drops Claiborne to canvas. Comes down, and he moves away, Claiborne. That's O'Day this time on his... Knees, he comes to their feet and Claiborne comes in underneath. O'Day again is forced to the ropes there, but he drags Claiborne with him. He's getting him up. Was he going to get the pile driver? No, it's Claiborne drags over and he back slams. Larry O'Day down the canvas. Again, the referee applies the count. Who's to their feet? They're both to their feet. This has been a torrid match from the whip. It's an Irish whip. On the ropes, off the ropes. Shoulders in and the bigger shoulders of Claiborne retained. Oh, a one and a half, two, three and Jack 
Clyde Lawn, born in France, from America, taking the match on an exciting match here on World of Championship Wrestling. Claiborne, the winner, Jack Claiborne. Well, what a match that turned out to be. Fans, here's our first event. It's a one-four match with a 20-minute time limit from Italy at 19 stone, Mario Milano. And his very popular opponent from Australia, Sydney, 16 stone three, Roy Heffernan. The referee is Wallaby Bob McMaster. We're ready to get underway. There's the bell. And, uh, of course, you fans have seen Mario Milano many times. And uh, from being a very clean wrestler, ever since he made some sort of deal with uh, Playboy Gary Hart, Mario has completely changed his style. Mario Milano getting the booze from the fans. Complete reversal of style. And uh, a lot of people have been writing in about Mario. Mario backs away. Roy was ready to throw a fist. Both men circling around. And uh, here's an overhand wrist lock by Roy Heffernan. He's putting the pressure on Milano. Milano reversed it. He pulled Heffernan's hair to bring him to the mat. It seems that uh, not only the fans, but many of the wrestlers and many people in the wrestling uh, promotion uh, just do not understand what has happened to Mario Milano except uh, that he's being influenced by Gary Hart. He signed a contract, I believe, with Playboy Gary Hart. Milano, who's a top-notch wrestler, now using an overhand wrist lock on Roy Heffernan, who is uh, fighting his way to his feet. Heffernan... Starting up, he's caught in a hold. He's going to attempt to reverse it, I believe. There he's, uh, he's up on uh, one foot and one knee. He's working his way up to his feet. And Milano forcing him back to the ropes. And that means an automatic break. On the break, he grabs Roy and he throws punches to the midsection. And now he clubs Heffernan. Heffernan twisting the wrist of, a uh, correction, Milano twisting the wrist of Heffernan. Now a knee to the shoulder brings Roy to the mat. Very strange behavior on the part of Mario Milano.
against the corner of the ropes, and of course that uh, should be an automatic break. And Roy flips him over. Mario backing away. Now he charges into Roy, who grabs him. They're both uh, in the arm and neck hold. There's a side headlock by Mario. And a punch to Roy's face. Heffernan with a punch to the head. The crowd cheering Heffernan, booing Milano. Now Roy's got him going in the corner, and he presses him. Got his knee across his chest. Milano in the corner. Gary Hart uh, made the announcement to one and all, the promoter Jim Barnett, myself, and a number of the wrestlers that he is going to team up the spoiler and Mario Milano. And everyone is sorry to hear that Milano will do that, but evidently the guy is cast. He is going to stay with him. I, I wish he wouldn't. A smash to the side by Heffernan, who has a front headlock. He drops Milano to the mat. Has a chin lock on Mario. And a knee across the throat. You'll notice, of course, that Mario has a mustache. And uh, uh, at the dressing room at uh, one of the stadiums, Gary Hart told Mario to grow a mustache. And uh, we all heard him say that. There's a mustache now on Mario's lip. Beautiful maneuver there by Roy Heffernan. He has Mario tied up in the leg Nelson. Roy, a top-notch wrestler. <laughs> Roy, trying to Make Milano give up. He's punishing him. Oh, man. He jars Milano plenty with that. Dropping his leg across Milano's head. And the same fans who've been cheering Milano now want to see him get beat. Heffernan quickly to his feet. Milano uh, was hurt on that. Back in the ropes, tried a leg dive, but Roy was too fast for him. Mario Milano uh, punched Red Bastine some weeks ago. Then he, he hurt his tag team partner, Antonio Pugliese, pulled the rope down, caused Pugliese to miss a tackle, go through the ropes. The next thing we know, he was signed with Gary Hart. And Mario is very rough. Oh, a nice comeback by Heffernan. A punch in the midsection. Uh, 
There's that side headlock by Milano. He's thrown into the rope. A drop kick by Heffernan, but he misses. Milano was too fast for him. Now Mario slips around behind him with the abdominal stretch. A powerful hold. The winner of the match, Mario Milano. To a draw, and that one, one, one year was unfortunate to, uh, to win the title away from him. I think it went to an hour. It went the full hour. Yes. Uh, yeah. two, he's out here two years, and uh, it was just unfortunate. Ron Miller is not the, uh, the world heavyweight wrestling champion, but it certainly uh, was a great match, and you can see that. Uh, a big crowd there, and I think we see Jim Barnett, a former promoter of World Championship Wrestling. Yes, next to the lady in the flowers. I don't know who gave who the flowers there. I think O'Halley Ray's got a bunch. Well, Jim... Uh, there he goes. There's Jim. He gets his. He likes the flowers. He had a nursery over in America. That's so right. He did, yes. He used to get seedlings and uh, start them from there. Jumbo Taruda looks a big man. That's Harley Race. That's Jim, Jim Barnett, Barnett, of course, with the belt. A bit more hair than he had out here. Well, it does happen. Jumbo Taruda on the left of your screen. This is coming uh, from the Sumo Stadium in Tokyo. Jim Barnett showing the belt. Wishing Harley Race. Harley Race. World champion. That's why he is a champion too. Inside the ring, Andre the Giant from France, seven foot five, weighing 510 pounds, moves inside the ring. And when you talk about a man mountain, well, you're looking one right now. And Mr. Tony Coloni, thank you for giving wrestling fans throughout Australia the opportunity of seeing Andre the Giant here in Australia in action on World of Championship Wrestling. You can see the size of the referee there, Ronnie Hanson, as he stands at centre ring as Andy Harpus moves over towards the centre to give instructions for the match to get underway. It is a special handicap match and Andre the Giant and Andy Harpus starting off. Harpus tries to shake the hand of the Giant, immediately he does so and loses sight of his hand when the Giant shook him. If you can... Uh, if you don't believe me, we may get our director, Clark Bissell, to give us a close-up of the Giants hands because they are just massive when you see him close up. It's very hard to believe that anybody could be as big as the eighth wonder of the world. There he is now trying to get a headlock onto Andy Harpers. He has it. And only one of these wrestlers can be in the ring at the same time with the Giant. That's Bobby Reagan moving inside now and Andy Harpers. Now you can see the Giant just lifting Harpers up. And Harpers will be 16 stand, Mike. Oh, yes, 16 stone. He's not carefully to smother him because his whole arm goes right across. And talking about the size of his hands, if we get a chance to talk, we might do a comparison with yours sure, and his. Sure, Because you see the difference. I've shaken hands with him and he just buries your hand. Oh, a big possum stop and as Andy Harpers has sprung everywhere. Now, this is incredible to see. Here comes uh, Bobby Reagan. And it's just like running into a brick wall. Tries to take the leg to take him down. Andy Harpers on the other end. Kicks one away. Kicks the other way. 510 pounds, 7 foot 5, 22 inch uh, shoe, is that right? Takes a size 22, uh, Mike, quite surprising because I thought he'd take about a 15, but he certainly amazed me. We'll talk about that a little later on, but look at the strength here of the giant. Will you look, just heaves them both away. As the cameras there have got a glorious shot there of the eighth wonder of the world standing at centre ring, waiting for one of these uh, opponents to come back to him. He hasn't got eyes in the back of his head because Andy Harpus has gone behind. Now Bobby Reagan tries to come around, throw his arms around the girth, but he can't even get him around as Harpus comes off the ropes and comes in to the giant. And they just ricochet away from him and hit the canvas on World Championship Wrestling. Now he goes over towards Reagan. And look at him pick Reagan up here, will you? Up above his head. Oh, boy, you reckon that hurt? Oh, I reckon I felt it over here. I mean, you know, you look at Andre, he's so huge, but everything's in proportion. That's why you really can't tell. I mean, if he had a huge body and, uh, and small hands, and stand out. But the hands are so big, the feet are so big. And he's burying Andy Harpus there. He's burying and The referee's saying, come out because you'll crush him. 
It's like an elephant trying to scratch his back on a tree. He knocks it over, and that's what he's doing there now as he puts the buttock straight into midsection. The match has gone two and a half minutes. It's a one-fall, ten-minute time limit, but the way they're going at the moment, they just can't seem to get the big giant down. But look out! Oh! So he split his head right open with that. He goes back now to Bobby Reagan. He picks up Bobby Reagan. Andy Harpers is still down there. Where's he going to put Reagan? Straight down on his back. Oh, and he fell heavily on the side there, Bobby Reagan. It's... Oh, Falling is like falling over a cliff. Oh, up he comes with the 22 straight in the face. He goes back. He's gone. Oh, look out. Oh, oh dear. Oh, dear. We didn't lose the ring. Three it is. And there's Andre the Giant. He's just wrecked Andy Harvis and Bobby Reagan. A great match and a great thrill to see. Andre the Giant, the eighth wonder of the world. Ted is going to send a ring to interview him. And uh, when Andre comes down, I'll go over and join them. Yes, thank you very much, Mike. We are at uh, ringside now with Andre the Giant. You may like to wonder over yourself, Mike, uh, because uh, we'd just like to uh, thank you for coming back to Australia again. I, I feel sure that you'd like to thank Mr. Clowney for bringing that, you back to Australia pleasure. again. That's my pleasure to come by uh, any time. Andre, let me ask you this question. You're the, the biggest box office attraction around the world. Uh, I was talking to Mike before about the size of your shoe. Now, uh, I know that we had a little problem last week. We thought, it's a few days ago, we tried to get you a shoe. I thought you took a size 15. It is a size... 22. A size 22, yeah. so I'm seven sizes out. Well, I yeah. made the mistake that if, if Adidas can't fit him out with a 15, you must have worn the box over, yeah. because that's the only thing that'll fit you. Well, we certainly will get him fixed up. But, Andre, what about the aircrafts? Now, when you get on board an aircraft, can you fit a normal uh, size seat? No, I have to take two seats. If, yeah. if you now have the first class on the plane, I have to take two seats. Right. Uh, well, that's a certainly expensive trip, isn't it, for Mr. Cloney? Yeah, for Mr. Cloney. <laughs> <laughs> Andre, we were talking also there before about the size of your hand. Would you mind holding your hand up so we can compare ours, Michael? You might like to hold them. I'll go this way. Now, have a look at that, will you, ladies and gentlemen. There's my hand, and there's Mike's there, of course. You can see the size. And that's not a bad finger, that middle one, is it? No. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a damn good size finger. Andre, Mike, uh, you'll get talking about what Andre ate. Uh, from uh, his food well, he point of view. surprised me last time because when I asked him about uh, what he ate for breakfast, he said he didn't have any, but, uh, but you brought up the business you have a pretty big lunch. But when you are hungry, when you said you eat often, which is probably seven times, you know, can you go through, what can you go through? A couple of steaks and a dozen eggs oh, or something three, in one meal? Three, four, three, four steaks, that'd be okay. Yeah? Oh, yeah. In one go? Yeah. <laughs> Back to the world of championship wrestling with the next match about to take place and the match will be between Johnny Gray and Lou Leota from Samoa. And you, can, you may notice that, that Leota is very, very heavily uh, tattooed. He went through a tremendous amount of pain and took seven days to complete. And uh, boy, he was a great athlete too. He's a football rep from New Zealand in 1972 to Australia with a rugby league, the New Zealand Cross, that you know all about, yeah, Mike. Right. Yeah. And he's also toured through the East. And there's plenty of action here too because Johnny Gray is no slouch in the ring. He's been around for a while. He spent he... three years in America, Johnny Gray. Um, he's a favourite of the people out here. And he went over to America to gain some more experience and did exceptionally well. I must mention, just in, in passing too, that uh, when I first uh, saw Lou Leoto in the dressing room, I didn't notice the tattoos. I thought he had tights on with a couple of ladders in them until someone pointed them out. And there they are. You'll see them. He's got the full Nelson. Look at them there, see? Right round, right round the buttocks, all round the front, and it comes up then just above his waist. See there, around the back? He's, he's, he's really tattooed all the way. And uh, I'm in the old days over in New Zealand, of course, I mean, it was a sign of beauty. And they used to get that tattoo, not only on where he has it, but all over their face, all over their body. And it's quite uh, traditional and uh, quite painful as Ted mentioned to you but it, uh, it symbolizes manhood and a very courageous and I think with a lady probably beauty well I'll tell you one thing lucky he has his trunks on there because he, you can't see it all and when you say heavily tattooed he's tattooed heavily everywhere look at that maneuver from Lou Leota from Samoa taking Johnny Gray down and has that uh, Arm lock there onto Johnny Gray, looking for the Japanese wrist lock there. It's a kneeling wrist lock there by Leota onto Johnny Gray, and the referee moving in now, trying to get the word from Johnny Gray if he wants to submit, but it's a negative from Johnny Gray, as you can see on the center screen. Gray trying to come back to one knee right now. 
He's up on his feet, and Gray this time takes Leota. He comes off the ropes. Look at that shoulder charge there by Leota. Johnny Gray waits for him, and down they go to centre ring. Johnny Gray comes up, a knee drop to the throat by Gray, a chin lock, and Leota slides out of it and finishes up with a hammerlock on to Johnny Gray. A beautiful piece of uh, wrestling there. You're going to see some great wrestling too, you know. We've got Dory Funk Jr. and also Jack Briscoe. Jack Briscoe, I remember, and Dory Funk Jr., the former world heavyweight champion the, uh, so there's some, still some great action for you to come is today one that yes it is today yes Ted, it's loaded with excitement <laughs> that's why it's called the world of championship wrestling and we see uh, over the top the Samoan as he digs in on Johnny Gray on the short arm bar Lou Samoto over he comes again he comes in on that arm Gray tries to get to his feet again he's dragged down or held down Tight headlock there from Lou Samoto. Oh, and Johnny Gray pushes him off the ropes. They come as a slam down there from Gray. Again, he goes back off the ropes. Gray oh. picks him up. Look at this. He's back. Oh, slams him down. Action replay, please. Can we see that on the action replay? A beautiful manoeuvre there. We'll have to be quick. Johnny Gray's got him packed. He's up there. Look at this. The count was there. Here it comes. Look at this. Off the ropes he comes. Over the top he comes. Down goes Johnny Gray. And the shoulders digging in. Again, they ride back to centre ring we are. Marino moves in once more, and you can see the look on Lou Lamota's face there. Leota as Johnny Gray still locks that leg up of Gray's. And the referee now moves in. Leota in a lot of pain. And there are submission coming in. We we'll wait for the referee's well, I'm decision sure, I'm here. Sure, I'm not sure what it is. Okay. Calls it's a draw, a draw match. Calls it a draw, all right. Well, that's the referee's ruling. I think we'll give them the ruling later on. We'll shoot to a commercial message, then we'll just clarify it and come back, eh? Sure enough. Well, ladies and gentlemen, another exciting match for you. And getting into the ring from New Zealand, weighing in at 17 stone, 4 pounds, man of many holes, as you've seen before, John De Silva. And from Sydney, Balmain in Sydney, at 16 and a half stone, they call him up the Tigers, George Barnes. Well, I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, you are still going to see that outstanding tag team bout. Yes, the contestants are standing by for the big one, Abdullah the Butcher, Wally Von Erich against Mark Lewin and Spurs Arian. So I would advise you, if you feel any of your friends are not aware of this, contact them, have them tune in to this great television program so that they can witness the big tag teams in action. Meanwhile, John De Silva and George Barnes have been added to the uh, excitement of the program for your enjoyment. John De Silva, New Zealand's wrestling star and a popular one indeed. Again, I make reference to this very popular Australian, George Barnes, and uh, George Barnes is a highly respected wrestler. A real trial horse. The Silver is looking for an arm. He's looking for a double wrist lock. And he may get it. Yes, he does. Then he... Try to turn it around into something else, but Barnes was in, wasn't getting away. Big bail by Barnes as he assumes control, and the Tiger from Batman, attired in his long black tights with the gold stripes, applies the pressure with this half forward note. Well, De Silva is a stylish wrestler. Oh, a big bump taken by Barnes, and I've said this before, but I close my eyes until they come down and land safely, because that was a big blow. And what's De Silva up to? De Silva has such a variety of moves, it's difficult to know just what he is coming up with next. 
And he covers his man. The card is won. And a close call. And so De Silva is finding George Barnes uh, uh, quite an obstacle. Barnes whips the arm up the back, applies a hammerlock. This is one of the great holes used by law enforcement officers around the world, most effective. And hanging on to it tenaciously, Barnes refused to be shaken loose. Come on, give up, give up. How will he escape it now? He tries to get away, and he does. Yeah, he may have actually ran away from the hole. And the silver again demonstrates his ability to count one, two, and oh, what a close call for George Barnes. A brilliant move by the silver. And oh, Barnes buried the silver's head into the mat as he went for the flying head scissor. You know, I've been wrestling many years, but I never failed to be excited or thrilled by brilliant moves, exciting moves. Although this one that Barnes has at the moment will require a nice move by De Silva to escape. He goes up, balances himself. Barnes holds on to him to make sure he doesn't spin out of that hold. Come on, give it up, give it up. And again, De Silva goes up, and he does. He spins like a top out of the hole, but he paid the price. The rubbing on the ears. Getting out of holes like that is costly. Another flying head scissors by Barnes, and Barnes evidently fell heavy on his own posterior. He favored it then. And the count is close. Barnes held now again by another brilliant move, and this time to Silva. Oh, Ram Barnes there, into the turn buckle. And full marks to De Silva for quite a maneuver. George Barnes appears to be uh, hurt slightly, staggered again if he's not. And Barnes is being soft. I think George Barnes is hurt. The count is one. No, he's still in there punching. He favored his back after that big bump earlier, and I thought that Barnes might have injured himself to a point that he would fall easy prey to the silver. Good knee lift, so Barnes is back in the ball game. And he is gritting his teeth showing a lot of determination as he claims De Silva, full Nelson now. Can he make it hold up? Oh, that's one way of breaking a full Nelson. Right in the midriff with a heavy butt or bump. Good forearm jolting by De Silva. What a good bout this is, an excellent bout. A vicious one, if I might add. And look out, this is dangerous. As again, we see De Silva bring Barnes down heavily on the leg as De Silva concentrates on that leg. He is planning his attack well, De Silva, softening up Barnes. Again, the leg and the left leg seems to be almost ready for the kill. Wallaby Bob, he asks George Barnes if he wishes to continue. Barnes answers with a couple of well-directed right hands. And here goes Barnes again. Ooh, head first into the turnbuckle. Now the moves that provide the headaches, ladies and gentlemen. You see the wrestlers taking the blows, the bumps that these two men have taken during the bout. 
It's not now they're feeling it, it's when they cool down. That's when the chiropractor rubs his hands for he knows he has a victim. And the victim is George Barnes. He goes for the surfboard hole, and it's a dandy. Oh, what a beautiful move. And yes, Barnes gave up immediately. And I haven't seen that one applied for some time. Balmain in Sydney, weighing in at 16 stone, 7 pounds, up the Tigers, Georgie Barnes. His opponent from Oklahoma, weighing in at 18 stone, 7 pounds, is Chief Billy Whitewall. Barnes in the black and gold jacket of the Tigers, a very famous rugby league club in Sydney with the emblem of the tiger on his You're chest. <laughs> Chief Billy Whitewolf says the referee that you don't have to worry about me, you better talk to George Barnes. I'm a man who fights this game and fights cleanly. Wrestling a great such as Chief Billy White Wolf. Well, the jacket's off of Barnes this time and he's ready for action. Being very wary of Billy White, who realizes those tomahawk chops of his very powerful indeed, but they're condoned by the National Wrestling Alliance, and it's quite all right. He'd be right away, George Barnes. It's a very big studio audience here to witness some of the greats of world championship wrestling. Chief Billy White will follow them nicely taking down George Barnes, followed up with a short arm bar. Nice maneuver from Billy White will. Oh, Barnes learns quickly and Barnes returned the compliment on uh, Billy White will. Standing wrist lock from Barnes. Oh, Barnes distracting the referee, then taking advantage of it. Barnes, who has just completed a successful tour of Japan in the Far East and... Uh, Wrestling against some of the greats by the na names of Killer Carl Cox. And other great names and Barnes has really come back with a hat full of tricks of the trade as he just caught the referee unawares then and took advantage of Chief Billy White. Drag from Barnes over the top he comes, still has the arm lock and wrist lock on Chief Billy White. With. Standing wrist locked again from Barnes. Ball taken from him by uh, White Wolf, but again Barnes is back as quick as a flash. Oh, over he goes and slams him down. Barnes had no alternative then but to go with it. Almost you would have seen the arm held by White Wolf and the body of Barnes go flying. Over the top, Billy White Wolf. Beautiful camera shots there from our 
men here in the studios of Channel 9, right on the ball. It's George Barnes. You can show, see from the facial expressions, the pain that's going right through, vibrating his, right through his body. On the figures, the birdie grip that Barnes has on uh, Chief Billy White Wolf. right into the side of the head, going up to the arm, short arm bar also by Barnes, giving White Wolf no chance of trying to get, of getting out of it. White Wolf trying all his experience, but Barnes still working on that arm. With White Wolf defense into attack and takes down nicely. Barnes comes up to a standing wrist lock, goes for one midsection referee, says no Billy White Wolf. Going to the hammerlock on Barnes. Pushing that arm right up the middle of the back of George Barnes. Lock now from Chief Billy White Wolf. <laughs> White Wolf working on that arm of Barnes. <laughs> Barnes tries to pull him away and uh, reverse the situation. Comes up with a hammer lock on the White Wolf. running him round and runs him right through into the ropes, trying to throw him straight through onto the floor. But White Wolf taking the front of it on the second rope, holds himself in centre ring. Barnes taking him down with a kick behind the legs and then a wrist lock from George Barnes. Barnes with those standing wrist locks on Billy White Wolf, ripping at the ears now with those rubber soles of his. Wonder why wrestlers have cauliflower ears. Barnes coming back, blows to the side of the head of White Wolf, coming down on his forehead. Knee lift from George Barnes. Head into the turnbuckle, and Billy White Wolf's head it was. Ross reversed by White Wolf. Barnes into the corner and comes off. Well, a big ricochet, and now the tomahawk chops are flying from White Wolf. White Wolf takes a wrist lock on Barnes. White Wolf with a standing wrist lock on George Barnes. Short arm. Barnes with the elbows and now he's ripping into the side of the head of White Wolf. Forward headlock from Barnes. Barnes really getting those legs well apart as White Wolf tries to stretch out for them. Barnes forcing White Wolf down to canvas. Barnes with a uh, Nelson on White Wolf, well taken over, suplex nicely and take down by White Wolf, comes in with a short arm bar, but Barnes' feet were almost outside the roast, Barnes pulling him back in and uh, <laughs> taking the brunt of the arm lock from Millie White Wolf. Oh, 
over the top goes Barnes. Four figure four leg scissors, but Joel oh, pushed out nicely by Chief Billy Whitewolf. Oh, Billy Whitewolf working on that forearm of George Barnes. Oh, hip throw there from Barnes. White Wolf hitting the canvas, dragged up by George Barnes. Barnes in with forearm jolts and coming in again on Billy White Wolf. Bring the elbows in and brings it up the knee straight in the side of the head of Billy White Wolf. An Irish whip from Barnes off the ropes comes. Oh, White Wolf goes down low, goes between the legs of George Barnes, comes around and then does a beautiful chop to the throat. Two over the now top he goes and it's a three count. The winner of the match, Chief Billy White Wolf. Taking the match very, very nicely over George Barnes. Catching Gentlemen, an exciting match coming up for you now, and a very popular wrestler indeed. From Honolulu, Hawaii, it's the fabulous King Curtis of 22 Stone. And his opponent, from Germany, 18 Stone, Hans Schroeder. Well, those present only have ears for King Curtis. And on the belt. Curtis wastes little time by going after Schroeder. And again, I make reference to the fact that this Schroeder is a real trial horse. I know of no other wrestler that can absorb so much and still come back for more. Of course, we have a few in that bracket. But Schroeder is a big, rugged man. I think the likes of Schroeder and George Barnes, two men I can mention, Bruno Massey is another. When you consider that they take on the super heavies, they ask no quarter, they give them. They are good men. And there we see the king threatening with that fist of his. King Curtis is a happy individual, a man who derives much pleasure out of life. He lives every day to the full. But that, of course, uh, is the way of the Polynesian. And this very popular Hawaiian has never deviated from that path. Play this Schroeder. He flirts with danger and he's pounding, he's pounding the body of King Curtis like a man confident of victory. And Curtis again absorbs a lot of blows. The heavy boot of uh, Hans Schroeder may have taken effect. He's a very important link in the People's Army. King Curtis is a mainstay. Wallaby Bob McMaster, your referee, the man from Marijabar, my host at the Wallaby Hotel. I know that nobody would complain about me throwing in a little plug like that for a great sport. A referee's job is a hard one. And as I speak, Schroeder continues on his merry way. Overing over the king and putting a twist to the arm as he manipulates the movements of the popular Hawaiian. And Schroeder keeps turning, he keeps twisting at that wrist. You know, when I look at Wallaby Bob and the great job he does as an official, it may be of interest to sportsmen in this great country to know that the great heavyweight boxing champions of the past have derived tremendous delight and revenue, of course, from refereeing wrestling bouts. 
there's a blow to the midriff of Schroeder. And the king is going to get revenge here. And he measures Schroeder. And the position's reversed. The count is one, it's two. And the king stays with him as our cameramen move in to capture an excellent study of these big heavyweights. Yes, I mentioned great referees of the past. Jack Dempsey was one of the most popular ever to referee a wrestling bout. Jack Sharkey was a most clever referee. Jersey Joe Walcott and Rocky Marciano before he passed away. Yes, they all like to referee professional wrestling. In fact, most of the great heavyweights wanted to be identified with this exciting uh, sport. There's a blow to the midriff. And the king is down again. Well, Hans Schroeder is certainly acquitting himself well in this bout. And he has been getting schooled. I thought so. It's the general Big Bad John who was in his ear. And uh, Schroeder has been performing like one possessed. And King Curtis had better watch out because Schroeder is a danger. And oh! Oh, I closed my eyes momentarily as I saw the head of the king go right down the count as one. I thought his head would bury into that canvas, but he back in time. Big Bad John, his influence seems to stretch in all directions. It reaches everybody. Rhoda, acting on instructions, is... And so Schroeder has been able to give King Curtis a great bout. Curtis realizes the situation. He moves in, and it is Schroeder now who is feeling the full power of the anger of the lion. And Schroeder being softened up by King Curtis as the fans now start to cheer their favorite. A slash with the side of the hand, like the blow of a tomahawk, sent Schroeder down. And the big German is paying for his earlier success in this bout as the thumb of the king came down and now the big weight rolled on top of Schroeder. The count is one, it's two, and three. The bell is called for as King Curtis came up with a big win, but it looked a little doubtful early. The influence of Big Bad John stretches in all directions and it reached to Hans Schroeder. Evidently, he coached him well before he went into the ring. You know, Lord, it really must be hard for you. It really must be a difficult job for you. For a long, long time, all over the United States and Canada, you have been known as the greatest wrestler that Australia has ever produced. Now to come all this way to your native land, to find it, be raped and sacked by Big Bad John, has got to be as hard for me as it is for you and everyone else. Big Bad John, as you yourself have said, has touched every level of society. He has the bulldog, and that isn't enough in addition to the black devil, the butcher. Right now, there is a plane leaving Haneda International Airport in Tokyo bringing Tojo. We only know one Tojo, Hero and the Claw. Hero's bringing his 
brother. God only knows what his brother is bringing with him. Lord, you and I and everyone else are on the threshold right here in Australia to the biggest battles that are yet to be fought and the greatest chapter in history will go down in our time and it will belong to the People's Army with you as our commander. And you know what? He's setting up quizlings in every city. Yes, he is. Yes. Well... World Championship Wrestling with a World Champion flavor. First of all, from Las Vegas, coming in at 18 stone, four pounds, Soldier Blackjack Slade, who was managed by Big Bad John. The World Professional Heavyweight Wrestling Champion from Blackwell, Oklahoma, at 17 and a half stone is Jack Frisco. And the beautiful World Championship belt. This is not a title match, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, international wrestlers. Black Jack Slade, a bit slow to remove his jacket as Briscoe comes in, he's ready for action, back into center ring, realizing Big Bad John and over in that corner doesn't want to get in his way, of course, referees hold and that's Briscoe pushing Slade into the rope straight away, a great call by referee Ron Hansen. Three, four, right. Briscoe backing away and... And as you noticed also, being very wary of Big Bad John, although John outside the ring, it's the referee's hold a knee straight in the midsection, and Briscoe comes up, beautiful knee lift of Black Jack Slade. Another man in the army of Big Bad John, going to the hold, and oh, arm drag coming up with a hammerlock, and Briscoe with the arm of Slade's right up the middle of his back. Falls for Jack, and Jack Briscoe not. Blackjack Slade and uh, Slade trying to get out of the hammerlock. Oh, comes in with the elbow right in the midsection off the ropes. Comes the giant Slade. Hook beautifully and bulldogging style as he sends down Blackjack Slade again with a hammerlock. And notice also watching that big bad John. He's heard of John. Heard what he's been doing all over the world. John, who has a reputation of uh, getting around him, vultures. And Briscoe has heard about... The army that John has behind him. Is Briscoe now still working on the hammerlock on Blackjack Slade? Paul Slade going up and Briscoe extra pressure to the arm and forces Slade straight back into the turnbuckle of break and get right out of the way, says Briscoe to uh, Big Bad John. Jack Briscoe uh, recently won the World Heavyweight title from Harley Race in uh, Houston in front of 47,000 people with his very famous figure four leg lock which was taught to him by Eddie Graham and he's displaying some of the exciting action as he comes down heavily across the forearm of uh, soldier Blackjack Slade. Let's go, Slade. Slade trying to get to the eyes of Briscoe, but Briscoe with a short arm bar just adds that little extra pressure. Slade is up there now and hanging onto the locks of uh, Briscoe and pulls Briscoe, pushes him into the ropes. Briscoe off the ropes and has played many of uh, American football and dig that shoulder straight in, but this time the leg of Blackjack Slade met Briscoe on the rebound and that the uh, arm coming down around the back of the neck of Jack Briscoe from soldier Blackjack Slade. Oh, Slade, but Briscoe fighting from the ground and coming in on the midsection. Slade reverts to kicking and kicks Briscoe straight into the side of the head. Briscoe locked in the corner and the count was applied. Briscoe tried to get up and couldn't. Again, it's Slade coming back. And Big Bad John hammering on the apron of the ring too to calling on Slade and Slade responding to the commands of the general in Big Bad John. He's dragged up, dragged up Briscoe and look out Briscoe, head slammed into the turnbuckle. Oh, again, Slade working on uh, Jack Briscoe. Jack Briscoe, the world heavyweight wrestling champion. And oh, midsection back to the side of the head, the southpaw in uh, Briscoe working with a left hook now, and he comes in with a right cross. Whoa, slamming straight into the side of the head of Blackjack Slade. They step over the toe hole. Louis crossing him over. It's a bigger four leg lock. It's a bigger four leg lock. And Slade has submitted. Now 
on your screens, weighing 18 stone two, from Stuttgart, Germany, Paulo van Erich. His opponent, weighing 15 stone 10, from Athens in Greece, Con Dandos. Well, this marks the return of Waldo von Erich on camera. And believe me, this man is rugged, rough, and tough. Defensive school of wrestling. And when he's in the ring, he explodes. He's a very tough man indeed. And reports have it that he is even better than he was here nearly three years ago. It's been over two years since he was in Australia. And matchmaker Jim Barnett has brought him back for another Australian tour. And now we're waiting for the signal from our referee, Michael Hunt, and we'll be ready for A. There's the bell, and it's Waldo von Erich against Khan Dandos. I'm a neck hold. Dandos forwarded to the rope. Solid blow to the chest by von Erich. And a side headlock. Choker caught into Michael Hunt. Count of three. Fast action. Uh, von Erich, uh, he means business as he goes in hard on Dandos. Oh, he... Well, yeah, Dandos has a headbutt, you know, and it didn't, apparently did not affect his head there. And Von Eric is uh, somewhat uh, surprised. You can't blame him. Oh, there's a headbutt by uh, Con Dandos. Hands Von Eric down. He moves in on the Von Eric. He outside the ropes in time. Waldo Von Eric stops down there. He almost, almost breaks the stand on the side of our commentary position. And... Uh, he really doesn't like those headbutts by the Greek. He picks up his riding crop, but Michael Hunt says, leave it outside the ring. And Dandos is ready for more. And Waldo von Erich comes in with a right to the midsection and comes in again. He puts in the boots and take a look at those boots. Those are not regulation boots. Those are the real Prussian boots. And Waldo von Erich now pouring it on on Con Dandos. Hits him with a forearm jolt. He goes outside the ring. He bangs his head against the apron of the ring. Bangs his head in again. And there goes Dandos. There's another headbutt. Von Erich doesn't like it. And that gives Dandos a chance to get back in the ring. And the fans in Studio 9 are cheering on the Greek wrestler Con Dandos. Michael Hunt giving Von Erich a count, and the German wrestler believes it. He isn't hurt that bad knowing this man. That I'm telling you, I've seen him in action in rain, and when he does erupt, he erupts like Hunt the Soviet. Michael Hunt is having a few words to say to Danos, and uh, Waldo Von Erich is still walking outside the ring there on the floor. He uh, walks up the steps now. Up inside. Dandos is uh, very eager to get on with the action. We did on him, but met a kick by uh, Von Eric. A blow to the face by Von Eric. Another blow to the face. And it's a punch to the chest, a return blow to the midsection. But then not making much uh, effect on him. It's the real low by Dandos. Up the ropes he comes. He tries for a shoulder, but in the ropes goes Von Eric. Von Erich meets him with a kick. Picks him up in the air. Forward when he slams him. Von Erich stands on the rope. Knee drops. Using that rope for extra leverage. He picks up his opponent. Blow to the face. Unusual hold. I don't think I've ever seen this before. Must be one of the uh, winning holds, and it is one. It's a form of a backbreaker. Well, we're just waiting for the wrestlers to run into the ring, and running they are, and it's a great team from Holland. First of all, at 17 stone is Jan Jansen. Trieste in Italy at 18 stone, 10 pounds, is, of course, Mario Milano. Well, uh, hold on. Oh, yeah, hold it, hold it, hold it. I heard that. First of all, I want to say this. This guy in the ring has no business up there. He has no business in the ring. 
get him out of the ring before we start the match. He wasn't scheduled to go in this According to me, he's scheduled. But from the top, I said the Tojo Brothers, the Austro-Asian champions, will be wrestling on television a great against Mario Milano and his partner. So very good. Very good. Happy? Now we're going to show you something. Right. Well, now, after that, ladies and gentlemen, getting in the ring from Japan at the combined weight of 36 stone, 4 pounds, the Austro-Asian heavyweight tag wrestling champions, the Tojo Brothers. He's got me baffled on Carson. I don't know where he's, what his game is. Can't even do an introduction in peace without him opening his big mouth again. Well, Milano's the man who has Hiro Tojo. Backing away, Milano brought that big fist of his. Up, whoops, watch out, Mario. The bow's on, and when the bow's on, there's trouble in the camp. Side headlock from Hito Tojo and Mario Milano. Caress in Italy, softly spoken, as I said, a thorough gentleman. Thorough gentleman indeed. He's teamed up in this particular match with Jan Jansen from Holland and Mario Milano, six foot three of him, pushes away. Hito Tojo, but under comes Hito underneath with his shoulder into Mario Milano. Milano hits the neck. And a beautiful arm drag. What about that, Don Carson? What about that? He's got them flying and got them back. See what happened, Mike? Now he has to grab a hold of the guy's tights and throw him over. The guy, my boy, does not have hair. He's Mario Milano. That's the only thing he can do is pull hair and pull tights. My boy doesn't have any hair to pull, but you see what he got a hold of. He got him a whole handful of tights and took him over. Whatever he got, he still got him over. That's all I'm drawing your attention to. Hiro, Tojo, and Milano. Milano from... Now what happened now? What happened now, Mike? Side headlock by Hiro, Tojo. But just wait a minute, wait a minute. Just wait. I'll have the last laugh, Don Carson. I'll have the last laugh. And some of the people at home, don't worry. Pull that head clean off of him. that pull his head right off? do it. What happened now, Mike? Certainly lost none of his own skills, Don Carson. Super mouth himself. That's oops, a side headlock and one on the blind side of the referee to the butt of the nose of Mario Milano. Hito Tojo pulling the neck of the Italian Mario Milano. Jan Jansen on the tag rope as Hito watches his brother Hito pull away at Mario Milano. Oh, still working on that neck of Mario Milano's. I might add they're working on the turkey neck of Mario Milano. Yes, well, whatever you like to call it. Don Carson and Milano coming up, trying to stretch and push that head of Hito Tojo back. But Tojo applies extra pressure. Milano this time puts him into the road. Whoops, and takes a heavy shoulder, hitting the deck. Milano to his feet. That time, no trunks. A beautiful arm drag. Down to go again. What's that, Don Carson? Look at your man fly now. Worried Don Carson. He runs over to give instructions. The Hito Tojo. Milano has the upper hand at the moment with the arm, short arm bar on Hito Tojo. Underneath comes Hito and back. Whoop, Milano's in trouble as he's locked in the corner. Arms a pin. It's a kick from Hito Tojo. Locked in trouble. <laughs> well, two on the one, why wouldn't he be? 
Mano working his way over, pushing Hito Toto, Hito Tojo over, trying to get over to Jan Jansen, trying to stretch him. In comes Hito, pushed away by the referee. Milano turned around, pulled again, pulled in like a fish by Hito Tojo. Manu again tries to do the walk and push Hito Tojo over so he can tag Jan Jansen, but they've pulled him back into center ring once again. Again, it's over the top. Milano, look at him dodging and weaving, trying to get around and tags Jan Jansen. That's a judo chop to the back of the neck if ever I saw one. Hiro Tojo this time working on the neck of Jan Jansen, takes him over, right over, pulling at the neck of Jan Jansen. Mike, you might go ahead and tell the people that these are the two finest wrestlers in the world right here. <laughs> these guys are, are the Austro-Asia Tag Team Champions, and uh, they're going up for the World Tag Team Champions. They're going up for the World Tag Team Champions July the 14th. Uh, that's right. And this is going to be held at Madison Square Garden in New York. Yeah. And uh, then we're going to get the World Tag Team Champions, and the people of Australia are going to be so happy because we're going to bring them to Australia, and we're going to defend them. Guess where? Here in Ballarat. Australia. Ballarat, That's guess. the only well, place. That's that should right. be very good. Thank you. Well, I don't have to tell them. You've told them, Don. You've told them. 14th of July. What a good day for it. Well, there's no doubt about it. They <laughs> must be world rated. The Austro Asian tag belt is uh, well respected all over the world, and that's why we have some of the greatest wrestlers in the world over here in Australia trying to just get a chance at getting a championship match against the Austro Asian tag champions because of the great this attached to, I'm trying to get that word out, attached to the Austro-Asian Tag Championship belt. I was just watching Jan Jansen there. I thought he was injured, but uh, came back gamely, only to find himself in trouble again by the Tojo brothers. Do you know why the Tojo brothers are not the World Tag Team Champions right now, Mike? Or well, possibly because they haven't had a World Championship match. That's exactly right. That's one thing you got right today. Thanks very much, Don Carson. I've got your name right, too, which is <laughs> one I'd like to forget, but can't. It's an Irish whip again, and oh, it's Jan Jansen whipped right across into the turn. Buckle. Jumps up, jumps back, and jumps straight in. The Hito Tosho's place. heavily with the chops. Puts the whip on, over he comes, oh, and he no toes up. In comes Hero into a four-round job by Mario Milano. The big Italian's hopping mad. Hito goes in. Milano pushes him back out of the way. Beautiful. Comes up. Oh, they've locked him. Sets them both over. What a beautiful maneuver from Mario Milano. He's flying. Whoops, they get out of the way. Milano hits the deck. Look out, Mario. And moves again. Oh, great excitement here. Great wrestling from Mario Milano. Double knockout here. Almost both down. Milano running heavily into Hito Tojo. Just able to tag Jan Jansen. Jan Jansen comes into Hiro Tojo. Milano, very dazed here. Gets from the ring. Jan Jansen fighting gamely, but Jan Jansen 
Has Hiro Tojo in trouble. Up the ropes comes Jansen. Takes and sends his shoulder into Hiro Tojo. Down it goes. Oh, it's a knee lift in the midsection of Jan Jansen. Jan's double up. Milano's up. Whoops, it's the rack. The rack again. The rack's applied by Hiro Tojo. The rack. And again into the table of Jan Jansen. Jan's in trouble. That's the rack. That's the rack. That's the rack. Oh, it's a very dangerous hole. That's what it is. 